Hello, let's get started on cardiogenic shock. This is one that a lot of students in the office have trouble with. So it's a good one to be going over. So cardiogenic shock. The pathophysiology, it's from an acute condition such as myocardial infarction that leads the heart not to pump correctly and perfuse the body. Um, myocardial infarction, cardiac arrest, ventricular dysrhythmias, VT and VFib are the causes to name a few of them. The goal of the treatment is to improve cardiac output, improve the amount of blood that's getting pumped out to the, all parts of the body, increase perfusion and maintain the tissue at oxygenation, clear out here to the fingertips and to the toes. So the assessment that we need to do, hypotension, the BP needs to be lower than 90 millimeters of mercury systolic or 30 millimeters lower than their baseline. Their urine output will be less than 30 mils an hour. They're gonna have cold, clammy skin, poor peripheral pulses, tachycardia and pulmonary congestion. They're gonna be disoriented, restless, confused, and they're gonna have continuing complaints of chest discomfort. So what do we do for these patients? We administer the oxygen as ordered. We administer the morphine sulfate, that's to relieve the chest pain, and that will help reduce that pulmonary congestion because they'll breathe easier. Um, prepare them for intubation and mechanical ventilation and give the diuretics and the nitrates as ordered. Now, when I'm doing this, I have to monitor that blood pressure constantly. Then I'm gonna give vasopressors and positive inotropes. Dibutamine is a positive inotrope as ordered to help with the cardiac output. I'm gonna prepare for an insertion of intra-aortic balloon pump if it's ordered, that's going to improve the coronary artery perfusion and the cardiac output. Remember, our goal is to get that perfusion and that output increase so it reaches out here to the fingertips. We're going to monitor the atrial, arterial blood gases and treat any imbalances. We're going to monitor urinary output and if we need to assist with pulmonary artery catheter insertion. That's also known as a swan gans. And that would help to assess that degree of heart failure. So hemodynamic monitoring, I'm going to cover this also in this one. So central venous pressure, pulmonary artery pressure, and mean arterial pressure. So for hemodynamic monitoring, there are some things that are required that we have. We have to have informed consent from the patient. Then we have to prepare the pressure monitoring system. And that includes a catheter, a transducer, and the monitor. And I have a picture here to show you exactly what I'm talking about. The catheter receives the pressure waves from the heart or great vessels. That is the mechanical engine energy. The transducer converts that mechanical in energy into electrical energy. And then the monitor, the cardiac monitor, shows that electrical energy in waveform on the monitor. So we're following it straight from the catheter to the transducer to the monitor. So we can see exactly how that heart is doing. So the catheter has to be maintained patent. And to do that, we infuse three to four milliliters of normal saline an hour. Now the transducer, it needs to be balanced or zeroed out and calibrated according to the hospital policy. I'm going to give you some generalized. So the phlebostatic axis, you're going to position them supine flat on their back. You're going to palpate the fourth intercostal space at the sternum. You're gonna follow that around to the side and find the midpoint between anterior and posterior, 
thoracic, okay? So front, the back, anterior, posterior. You're gonna find the mid spot and you're gonna mark that spot on the skin with indelible ink. So you can use it so that you know where you need to have it. Here we are with that exact procedure again. Position them supine, palpate the fourth intercostal space at the sternum, follow to the side, find the midpoint between anterior and posterior, and mark it with indelible ink. So central venous pressure, it reflects the pressure within the superior vena cava under which the blood is returned to the superior vena cava and the right atrium. The normal range for this is three to eight. Elevated CVP indicates an increase in blood volume as a result of excessive IV fluids, kidney failure, or a result of sodium and water retention. So an elevation means things have increased. Decreased CVP indicates decrease in circulatory blood volume and may result from fluid imbalances, hemorrhage, or severe vasodilation with pooling of blood in the extremities that limits that return to the heart. So right ventricular pressure, if this is increased, things that could cause it would be the mitral stenosis or insufficiency, pulmonary disease, hypoxemia, constrictive pericarditis, chronic heart failure, atrial and ventricle septal defects, a patent ductus arteriosus, and pulmonary emboli. Now, some of these are peed conditions that can cause right ventricular pressure, okay? And then pulmonary artery pressure, the normal for pulmonary artery pressure is between 15 and 30, systolic in eight and 15 diastolic. The mean pulmonary artery pressure is between 70 and 105. So pulmonary artery pressure shows the right ventricle function and pulmonary, circul pulmonary circulation pressures. So if it's increased, it shows left-sided heart failure and increased pulmonary blood flow from the left to the right or any condition causing increased pulmonary arterial resistance such as pulmonary hypertension, um, volume overload, mitral stenosis, acute respiratory distress syndrome, or hypoxia. Then we have pulmonary artery wedge pressure. It reflects left atrial and left ventricle pressures. And if it's increased, it's left-sided heart failure, pericardial tamponade, or mitral stenosis or insufficiency. So, I've covered cardiac, cardiogenic shock and went into hemodialysis measuring because you have to have that for the cardiogenic shock. I hope these two reviews have helped you. If you have any questions or concerns, you know how to get a hold of me. Have a good day. Bye-bye.